All right, what's up, guys? Mature DD, and this is going to be the second part uh, where I show my RTA matches from yesterday. So I did a 30-day challenge on a brand new account. You can see me start the account. I got a comment yes on yesterday's video that I bought the account. The account has 30 days login. If I bought the account, it would show all the days the person logged in before I bought the account. But it, I have everything documented from when I made the the start of the account. So I did hit masters with an 80% win rate. So I'm gonna be going through those matches today. I'm gonna do my daily summon. So if any of you are interested in the stat line of my video or of my units, uh, that's in the video from yesterday. I'll link it down below and nothing good. And if any of you would like to see uh, like how I did it, I'm going to be uploading guides. The first guide I'm going to try to get out today. It'll be up later today on the channel. So if you're new to the channel, if you're willing to subscribe, we've got like 150 new subs since yesterday, which is really cool for YouTube. So I'm going to be pushing the guides out all month. It's, it's going to be a long guide series. So if any of you want to see how I did it, that'll be there for you. And so that way, hopefully new players can uh, get something out of or new players get something out of it. Maybe old players can get something out of it. OK, dang, I got excited. I didn't have Armin yet on the account. OK, but yeah, so 80 percent win rate uh, for Masters RTA it took 15 games. Yeah, 15 total games to get there. Um, but yeah, 80 percent win rate, I think it's pretty solid. So I'm going to go ahead. So the bad thing with this, all right, real, real quick, if you want to join the Discord, if you're a new player and need a guild or anything like that, or just want to keep up with my Twitch or like see what I'm streaming so you can come watch, uh, link to the Discord will be down below. Also, if you're interested in account work, you can join the Discord, DM me, and uh, I can work on your account. I do charge for that. So link to the Discord will be down in the description and at the pinned comment. So, and I know the link works because we had like 100 new people join the Discord yesterday. So I bad thing with this though is I have to watch the matches like this. You can't see them live. I wish I had the live for it because I was excited the whole time. I was like this. I was having so much fun playing RTA. It was, it was pretty enjoyable, I think. But uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and get into the matches. So uh, with RTA making a new account, my main goal. Also, the reason I'm doing this is because I have the video, but the there's music playing in it. And the music's muted for a lot of it, so there's a lot of parts where there's just no talking at all. So the plan is just to talk over it. So whenever I first started, I thought AOL was going to be the biggest problem that I could have. And my first matches, my idea was to draft AOL, Destina, and then counterpick from there. And I learned very quickly through the first draft that that was not really a viable strategy. So going through it, I did pick Aiden right away, and then getting into the match, First turn, he soul burns Lethe. This, as you see, I'm fighting real players. This person has multiple limiteds. Um, so they've been playing for a while. They have ML5s. They have Bryceria to counter my uh, my entire team. Actually, it counters both Aiden and my Mercedes. So this game, whenever he S3 the first time, he hit Arrowell. If he hadn't hit Arrowell, I think I would have been in a decent spot because I would have countered with both Mercedes and my Arrowell. And then he gets a dual attack right away too which didn't help. So overall, like this first match, I, I do end up losing it, but I think I got pretty unlucky over just over everything. So I do try to get an early, early kill and get immunity up at least. So I am able to one shot the Milim right away. So Aiden is going to be like your key, that and Swag Super are going to be your key units going into RTA. There's a chance I could have missed here. So I did get lucky that I hit the 80% hit. And killed but once he rips this s3 i'm defense broken into an alinci s3 it was just ggs from there not a whole not a whole lot i could do uh with this scene already going and not being able to cleanse one thing there's not there's not anything i could have done for this match he did miss with Bryceria, which gave me hope that there was a chance but it just it, it wasn't it wasn't enough so with this alinci s3 he hits my fire unit even so i just i had no chance of winning it so I'm going to just fast forward a little bit. So yeah, coming in, Aiden had a chance to win it, but not really. Um, the nice thing is skipping through this is uh, I do like after each match go and change units a little bit. So I'm I'm trying to decide, I think here, if I'm going to go the belly and ban just for fix standing. Because that was my original game plan. That's all I tell everyone to do to start RTA. And I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah, I moved in, move into the belly and ban. So the belly and ban pick first pick Stene is just so so clean to learn how to play RTA with. It just gives you so much so much freedom. So immediately just take 
stat A plus some mitigation. They first picked Araz, meaning they weren't going to be like a super stacked up player, which I knew. So going into it, it was I knew I had a pretty pretty easy draft. He picked SSB, and I do have Solitario, which was nice because I could just slap down Solitario and uh, pretty much get a free one off that. But I don't know what I end up picking for this one. I end up going Rowana because that counters with Politus and that. But you can see this player, this was a true, this is what I should have fought for my first match. <laughs> Uh, but I was able to just completely outdraft him. There's nothing you do. It's a little 50 strays and his units aren't awakened. So seeing this, it's just, it's pretty much obvious that it's just a immediate win. So his Politus though, one thing going into this match that was funny is Politus was 260 speed. at a 260 speed Politus. So I do get debuffed right away. And this scared me a little bit. Uh, just because you never expect a 260 Politus. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why they built that. So... I just try to go for debuffs, but from here, it's it's pretty simple. This video is going to end up being decently long because uh, I am going to just go through all my matches. I'm going to go pretty quick, though, but I just want to show the, the drafting strategy and kind of talk over everything. So just know this video's reason probably about 30 minutes, maybe maybe 30 minutes. But I do get the hit on the strays there, but I don't think it mattered a whole lot. Um, I am unbuffable, so I do miss out on buffs. Luckily, he did miss my shoe. But the nice thing with having Solitaria here is that Seaside Bologna can't gain focus. But I don't think... I said in my last video that if I had Spectre Tenebria... Or not Spectre Tenebria, Falconer Clurry. Falconer Clurry would fill the, the hole that uh, like not having Solitaria would do. Because right here, Spectre Tenebria would have countered, but I would have had um, Flurry, which would have defense broke either the SSB or the Strays and provoked them. Making it to where my shoe, my shoe plus Fal or, uh, Falconer Clary would be able to kill his whole team, even getting countered by SSB. So, I and the thing is, Politus does counter Falconer Clary, but it wouldn't. We saw that the Politus didn't have any damage, so it didn't matter. If the Politus was slower, then we still probably could have S2 and been fine. Either way, like Falconer Clary would work in this this spot and still win you the match. It just wouldn't be as clean because the SSB would be countering. So that's that's this match. So you can see from here already that I pretty much won. I get a nice dual attack into a shoe proc. So shoe is clutch. Shoe you definitely want to make sure to get her from selective summon number two. But yeah, I end up just killing this whole board from here with Spectre Jubia Soul Burns and then end up slowly winning the game. So there's our first win going into the next match. We're gonna do the same strategy. So he first picks Airwell, but now we're gonna go ahead and take Spectre Tibria, and I started taking um, Destina. So Destina is another character that you'll guaranteed have from your selective summons if you follow the guide that I'm releasing later. And Spectre Tibria is really nice, but she can die. So having Destina as a backup option, allowing your yourself to revive her, just gives you two chances. It just gives you a ton of ton of freedom in your RTA drafts. Yeah, I do pick Destina. So he goes Lethe. I found everyone was picking Lethe. Uh, all, all the newer, I don't know how new some of these players are. Obviously some of them have a lot of the limited characters. So some have been playing for probably a year or longer, but this person ended up going Mort too. So overall this match, I knew once he picked Mort that it's pretty free. So in terms of the ban phase, um, since I have Shu, I didn't think he was going to ban Shu. So I banned Mort and then he ends up banning Shu. So I, I have Sharoon though, Sharoon is amazing if you get Sharoon or if you have the opportunity to get her she is insanely good in the current RTA meta and the thing right here Falconer Clurry would have been able to provoke Lethe and it wouldn't have been as good but Lethe would be defense broken right here before my Spectre New Mirror's turn and I could just obliterate it so that's what I'm saying is trading Falconer Clurry for Bellataria is it, it, it would it would end up winning you almost every single game. So there is a free-to-play option to uh, try to use in that spot. So my audio is bugging out a little bit. Hopefully you guys can't hear that. Um, if you can, I'm sorry. It's just my... I want some kind of sound in the background, but uh, the music's going to be all choppy then. I don't know if it's worth it. So 
this game from here, it's, it ends up being a long game, but it's just, can I kill Lethe and control Lethe before it does anything to me? So I, I won't make you sit through the whole match, but he just keeps hitting me, but then I can keep just Solitaria. The thing is with, with Falconer Clary is I would have killed Lethe faster. So, um, and Sharoon also resets. So both Lethe and Falconer Clary or Solitaria in this situation would help you to control this one character here. And like, see, this resets it, so it can't S3. Just keeping Lethe from being able to do her her soul burn, but this this kind of comp right here, um, it's just very easy to take advantage of when you have Spectre Tree Break, because it's just, you literally have to kill one threat, and once you kill the one threat, play around the revive and kill the threat right once it gets revived, and you're good to go. So this this draft was pretty, pretty simple, but like I said, it's a long game, so we're gonna fast forward through. I just completely control him the whole match, slowly burn him down, and then he backs out. So we won two, two matches there. I go and do a couple expeditions because I try to be as efficient as I can on this account. Um, so skip through those and then back in. Next draft. So immediately I go Spectre Chibre, Arrowell. So I do take Arrowell over Destina and there, that's where I hit rank 70. So I hit rank 70 farming Wyvern uh, in the background during this. So I hit rank 70 and it was on the 30th day of the account. But this person, he... He's kind of got some speed. As you see, he has a lot of ML5s, and there's Summer Charlotte, so he has... Uh, and he has Ahmed, which is... You, there is no extra way to get Ahmed right now. You can't get it from the side story. So you see this player, they have a lot of stuff, but they just don't know how to use them uh, to the best of their ability. So going into this match, it's it's pretty, pretty simple. Um, I'm in trouble. The Sharklet is going to kill me, but I will be able to kill the Sharklet. Or the... the we call it Sharklet, but it's the Charlotte that is Summer. <laughs> That's what everyone calls her on, on Twitch, at least. So from right here, I, I know not to waste my full revive because I'm going to end up dying next turn. So I just go ahead and get the cleanse. So I, right here, I do have the option to stun the FCC and kind of mitigate a little bit. But I wanted to stun the, the Charlotte and I get 15 percented. If I would have soul burned, I might have been able to kill the Charlotte there. But I just I was just banking on the stun and then trying to be greedy so that I have souls for the next next turn. So the Sharklet does end up taking your turns and obliterates me. And I'm down to just the two characters. He starts hitting Destina, but my Destina is on Ward's Origin, so she's pretty annoying to kill. Uh Aiden does get her turn, so I'm able to one shot the the Charlotte, which is nice. Yeah, we barely one shot it, but we one shot it. And then I got the revive. So once Charlotte's off the board, then I can revive Spectre Zebra, and he can't touch Spectene the rest of the game. The only way you can touch Spectene is by using his FCC um, S3, but I have mitigation through Arrowell. I have Adamant at least if he were to crit me. So Spectene is hard to kill here. Even if I don't get Spectene back, I can probably kill the Zeo in time. But he had soul burn there. If I was him, I would have soul burned right there. I think a lot of early trying to push RTA is one, you're not going to know what to do, but your opponent doesn't know what to do either. So you're going to have a lot of situations where there's games that you really shouldn't win, but you're going to end up getting getting the win because of it. But the bad thing is, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to lose some games you should have won. So which is the case in a few of these matches is I, I just misplayed. I haven't been playing RTA. A whole lot recently so from here i'm able to just break the skill null right away and then can just soul burn um i should have just focused the ahmed right away from here but it really didn't matter because my uh aiden was about to take a turn so i just end up clearing the rest of this and we're on to the next match so i am i got a pretty good win rate going and the first match a big part of losing it was because aiden didn't dodge uh, you will find that that is a theme with whether I win or lose games when I pick Aiden is if she dodges or not. That's that's part of the thing. So Epic 7 has a lot of RNG in it. It has 15%, uh, so you always have a chance that you can get um, screwed over on landing a debuff. No matter how much effectiveness you have, you can always miss a debuff because there's a mechanic to stop that. There's speed RNG, so if you have the same speed character or around the same speed character, a slower character can outspeed a faster character. And then you have dual attack RNG, which makes it to where anybody can win any game. And then you have dodge chance and the 50-50 hit chance on elemental advantage. So with that, 
there is a ton of RNG. And the reason that RNG is in the game, everyone's always complaining about it. But the reason 15% exists in PvP, the reason speed RNG and all of this exists is so that players who are not able to spend a billion dollars and get the greatest gear in the universe and can have the perfect account, it allows you to be able to fight against the top players and still have a chance to win no matter what. A lot of people just don't seem to get that. If they took away all the RNG of this game, the game would be purely pay to win. It would be a pure pay to win game. It's still a pay, a pretty much pay to win game, but the thing is a free to play player with a little luck can beat the biggest whale in the game. That's, that is Epic Seven and they balance the game that way so that it is not a purely pay to win game. Because if someone has a 330 ran and it's guaranteed always going to take first turn on top of you are always going to land all your debuffs because you have enough effectiveness on whatever characters, you are always going to win. If you are the fastest player in the game, you would always or you wouldn't always win, but you would win more. Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't understand the complaints. That's just how the game is designed. And the people who have been playing it for three years still complain about it. It's like, if you're still complaining about this, like, you probably shouldn't be playing the game at this point. Like, that's how the game is. I also, my Aiden got hit by Ran here. But that is one hot take, I guess, or whatever. I think the RNG in Epic 7 is a necessary evil to keep people who cannot afford to spend infinite money playing the game. I, I think the RNG is, is fine. It's annoying. Don't get me wrong. I think it's annoying. And there are games that I should win. But I know that there wouldn't be a player base. The game would be a purely pay-to-win game if it was just all dependent upon no, there's no RNG. It would be just the most pay-to-win game that you could possibly play. So that's my take on it. Like, yeah, maybe I think they could adjust and like they lower dual attack chance. Like they could make it a little bit less on some of the RNG things, but I don't know. I, th I think the way they have it balanced is, is a very smart thing. So this game, I'm fighting more Telex. I think I end up winning this somehow. So I revives Mui. I got lucky that he got Mui on the revive, I think. And then from here, Senya just pretty much solos him. So Mui just kills himself by hitting Senya. Senya's invincible. He can't hit Spectre Tenebria. So Spectre, or, uh, Senya's just rolling him. So I don't have Senya's artifacts. So see Senya right here without even really... A, she did more damage not attacking. So one thing with Senya is... If you have her artifact, she's even better because she does extra damage after she hits. So right there, I would have gotten an extra couple thousand damage. But from right here, it all comes down. So my Senya is bulky, kind of bulky, but the, it all comes down right here. It's a 29k HP Ravi. I'll tell you right now, this guy is not a new player. So he's soul burn, and it all came down to right there. If he would have crit me, I think I would have lost. So there was some RNG in there. That's why they add RNG into Epic 7, so that people who are 30 days into an account have a chance to fight someone who has <laughs> got a 30,000 HP Apoc Ravi on Proof of Valor, fully maxed out artifact. Like, I, I, if this game did not have the RNG elements in it, I would never have won this game. And this guy would be fighting other players who have everything in the game. So this is a way that new players can get into the game with some little bit of RNG and still be able to enjoy the game. Okay, so now next match... We're still in placements. This guy tries to cleave me. This fight was, I just, uh, against cleave, a lot of the time, you're just going to have to play pure RNG. Shu can counterattack. Senya does passive damage and can uh, AoE provoke. Aiden can has a dodge chance that she can just roll the complete other team if she dodges. So whenever you're fighting cleave, one of the strategies that you can do is just pick RNG units. And as you see, I'm hovering Mercedes, so like this is RNG too. So if my right side gets, or if my side gets lucky, because he's because he's fast, I can't contest with that speed. I'm a new player. I I don't have that speed. So the only thing I can do is hope that I can RNG him. And I think we do. <laughs> Pretty sure we win this one. So going into the match, he zeos straight into. I don't remember who he zeoed here. He goes for my shoe and I counter right away. So there's already some, um, a lot of damage. I got very lucky. Right out of the gate, which is nice. He goes for my Senya instead of a debuff character with Jacko. So this person, I think, misplayed as well. 
But as you see, all of his units were like 240, 250. <laughs> I have the gear to make one 240 character on this account, and it's my Solitario. I maybe could make two or one 250 character. So he does one shot Aiden with Sahak. That is the one bad thing is Aiden just was useless this game. But the nice thing from here is because I got the speed buff because he attacked me with Jacko, I'm able to S3. And once Senya S3s, if the opponent doesn't have immunity, as long as you don't get super unlucky, you just win for free. So they're blind. So with having a 50% chance to miss with blind on top of Senya's 50% crit resist, having a chance that the opponent won't crit, it's just a free free match from there. So there's nothing you can do. I just end up winning for free because Senya got to cut. So I show my Senya there. But then next match, so before we get into it, we are looking at a 5 and 1 win rate. So we're about halfway through the games. But I'm going to go pretty quick. So this guy just full RNG'd me. So I started with the Spectre Stebria first pick. And then he just went all counter nonsense units. So basically what I did to the last player I fought. But the thing is I'm not cleaving. So it's not as good against me. I can counter pick. So I got the Rowana in there. If he counters, I heal. I have a stun and protection from Arrowell. Then I add my own RNG which, of Aiden, which the reason I picked Aiden there was because she's one of my highest single target damage dealers. And then I pick um, BBK because BBK cannot be countered on her S3. So going into this game, I wasn't really sure what to do. I just immediately went and hit uh, Rem. And then I stun the um, Soleen. And then I stun the Rem and break her thing. And then from there, it's just a free cleanup. I just uh, soul burn Spectre Tenebria. So, yeah, I killed this. And then once Spec Tiny gets her turn, he does Elbrus. He, he banned um, he banned Rowana, so I don't have the healing. But from right here, there's just not a, not a whole lot he could do. He can S1 me, but then from right here, I just soul burn Spectre Tenebria. S1 cannot be countered. So this match was pretty much just completely free. Trying to play complete RNG games like that, you it's very easy to draft against you. So we're 6-1 and one during this game. We both banned Belly, and he first picks Ran. So the only time I don't first pick Spectre Tenebra is when they first pick Ran. Uh, or, like, giveaway that they are cleaving. If they pick Zeo, I'll pick Spectani. But if they pick a AoE cleaving character, I do not pick Spectani. So this one, I'm pretty sure, is actually a loss. There are certain cleaves that are so hard to deal with. I was, like, I was molding in my draft because I have kind of a draft that I could do. But I just didn't didn't know what to pick here. I ended up picking the Champions Rado because I was like, I don't know what else to pick. This is probably my best bet in terms of I didn't I just didn't know what else I could have done. I could have went the BBK, but she would have just got stripped from Rain because I don't have effect res. So I think the whole game came down to this right here. My Aiden gets hit. I think if my Aiden doesn't get hit, we have a chance to win because we counter on both Shu. And then Champion Zerato hits pretty hard. And if Aiden counter right there, we would end up killing half of his board. And my Aiden wouldn't be defense broken. So I think I had a chance to win, but we just got unlucky with the uh, thing. But yeah, this is just, I got cleaved. Nothing I can do. There's, there's no way I can speak and test that until I play the game for like another month. And this isn't going to work. So the next guy, he first fixed Destina into Lethe into Senya. So he took two of my main core characters. And then he picked Landy. I will say Landy is a nightmare to deal with. Uh, Fire Mercedes is the Landy counter. If you're fighting Spectre Debria or Landy, you got Fire Mercedes. He bans Fire Mercedes. I don't have anything I can do against this. This guy just, he, with him taking half my characters, I just don't really have many options. Um, I could have picked Solitario over Rowana. Rowana was a bad pick here. But once he killed Spectre Debria, it was just over. So that was a rough one. So right here is where I got scared. I was like, okay, this is not looking too good. I am starting to lose. These players are starting to get a little bit better. But then I, I I saw the mistakes in my other drafts, and then from here, I just pretty much draft, I would say, the best I could with my account. So this one going in, he tries to pick some debuffers. I got Dilibet. With having Dilibet was very nice. If I didn't have Dilibet, I'm not really sure what I would put to replace her. I would need a some kind of Soul Weaver that can cleanse. Um, but I also picked Lulica, so I have my whole draft is just completely set upon um, getting rid of debuffs. So he immediately S2s me, but then I counter uh, with Aiden. So you see his, his team is basically already half dead, and I have Lulica. And then when my Aiden pushes forward, I'm able to get rid of the Caesarea, which is huge. And then we're able to cleanse with Lulica, and, between Lulica and us. Uh, the other character and then i'm able to just soul burn steady and kill the rest of his board 
So he just backs out. He knows he can't win. So after placements, we're at 1530. So from 1530, I go back, restart my Wyvern, and we go in. I ban Bellion, keep the same thing. And then this, he picks two grass units. So I automatically get a Fire Mercedes or three grass units. So Fire Mercedes goes crazy here. He didn't ban Solitaria. Um, he banned the Dilibet, I guess, to try to keep me from cutting and pushing so that I couldn't kill the Zahak. He was hoping the Zahak could just win the game for him. But the thing with Destina plus Aiden is even if they have a Zahak, you can just revive. So he, he goes and tries to do his thing. He kills Aiden. But then uh, from here, he's going to S3 with Senya, but I have Destina. Destina's not going to get hit by Senya. She's not going to be provoked. I can cleanse all my provokes off. And she is speed tuned above my uh, Mercedes. So from here, it's it's just pretty much free. Um, once Once we get Aiden back... Uh, once we get Aiden back, she can do a ton of damage, and then Fire Mercedes just wins the game once she gets attack buff. Fire, Fire Mercedes damage, she's not reforged. She's her artifacts like plus eleven, but she still has enough damage that she she just she. I I don't know if she's the highest damage character in the game, but it's actually insane how much she can put out. So we'll go a little bit further, and then. Yeah, he, there's nothing to do from here. Solitaria ended up being very good there. Um, I think Falcon or Clary would have did the same thing, though. That's I think this is one of the games I was saying. Solitaria, I'm picking her every game, but if I wasn't, I'd be picking Falcon or Clary because Falcon or Clary would have defense broke and stripped one of the characters, and then Fire Mercedes would have just obliterated it. So I think I think Falcon or Clary would work almost in every situation, as, as a new player at least, that Solitaria would. So this draft, he... As you see, he has a lot of a lot of characters, a lot of limiteds. Uh, this is he's got Commander Pavel sitting there. He's got Ravi. He's got Bologna. So this guy definitely has the characters, which really scared me. I was pretty worried going in, but I got Sharoon and I got uh, Solitaria. So the SSB is pretty much useless, and I have Solitaria and Sharoon to knock Laney out of Guiding Light right away. I'm able to stun. So turn one with Solitaria, I just S1 and I get. I asked on the air well to try to get rid of the um, the buff so I could do extra damage. But from here, the Solitaria, this is a spot where Solitaria is probably not replaceable by Falcon or Clary because it would have been very hard to keep up with this much damage. Uh, this is a game that I probably would have ended up losing and would have had to play another one to get to Masters. But I'm sure most of you guys that are playing, once you get into RTA, because I doubt you're going to try to push RTA as fast as I did, you will have other options that you can mess with. So I, this was solitary was big. I don't get me wrong. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna downplay it getting her. But if you guys get any other mo fives to get last rider crow, there's a bunch of mo fives that if you get during that time, you're gonna be in an even better spot than me. So right here, I just start focusing his damage. There's nothing he can do. He already ripped his S3, turn one, which was a mistake. So once he mis or misplayed that, I'm able to soul burn, kill the Aravio Stene, and we're good to go. So going into this, this was a pretty scary game, but the thing was he picked all single target damage dealers, and I have Spectre Tenebria. So by picking Mercedes here, I think he feels the need to ban Mercedes. And because Mercedes just, just her damage is crazy, he, they know that. Oh, no, they banned Shu. I guess, I don't know why they banned Shu here. I think that was a mis or um, incorrect ban from him. But from here, I have two um, units. His characters don't do a lot of damage, Winter and um, Celine. So Celine does decent damage, but he's not going to be able to kill me in time for my Destina or my other characters can at least kill his Celine. So I don't think his draft is too great. I can't ever cleanse, but the thing is, if there's ever a Winter in the game, he has another limited character, by the way. But uh, if there's ever a winter in the game, all you have to do is not use your attacks or your non-attack skills until you kill the other threat. So once I kill Celine, I know that I'm free to start using anything on Destina. He, I think he's able to almost kill Destina by the time I get there. So I needed to try to get the Celine off as fast as possible. So my goal here was... S1 or S2 Soul Burn and then try to land some debuffs because I'm on Seer Ren. So this is a spot where Falcon or Clary probably wouldn't have worked either. Because I she might have, but I couldn't um I couldn't safely rip a Falcon or Clary S3 or else it will proc the Celine. So the thing is, even if Celine's stunned, you cannot use your skills because she'll full cleanse. 
So I have to S1 here. I get a little heal, which keeps me alive, I think, until the next rotation. And then there isn't anything he can do from there. He backs out. So now we just need, we have two more games real quick. So this match, we get Rand. I immediately start going anti-cleave. He picks into what I thought was going to be a crazy draft, and the incest is Bikise. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to end up banning uh, the Bryceria because that's the main threat to my Aiden. And then now Aiden has a chance to just win the game by herself. So he does rip, and then Aiden counters, and I think I pretty much just kill him right there. And the thing is, anytime anyone picks Ran against me, I usually pick Senya because it gives you a 50-50 win con, basically. So right here, Falconer Clary would have done the same job, though. So only one game out of all this that Falconer Clary wouldn't have been able to replace Solitaria. So that just that shows you that you don't have to have the ML5s. You can, you can definitely work around it. So my Aiden is on the artifact to do extra damage to dark units, so I know I'm going to be able to one-shot this right away. Once that's one shot, 30,000 on free to play gear. Like my gear on Aiden is <laughs> the free attack set from the hunt challenges. It's so funny to me. Like looking at my main account, I would never build my characters like that. But seeing that it's actually viable is, is just hilarious. Okay, so that guy, very quick match. It's nice when people cleave and you have a way to counter it because the matches go pretty quick. So this is my first AOL I fight. He also ended up picking Ed and Shu. But the thing is, once he did this, he banned Solitaria. So Ed really didn't have any purpose whatsoever in this match. This match was very close. I knew this was a game to get me to Masters, and I was I was stressing. I was like, okay, this is a hard game. This guy's got he's got Ed, he's got Shu, lots of RNG on his side. He dual attacked me like three different times. He immediately killed my Aiden too. He just, he just ripped into Aiden, and this was, I was like, oh, well, this is GG's. <laughs> he just immediately ripped into Aiden and hits her. I was like, well, <laughs> unfortunate. That's, uh, I guess I'll take the L and move on. But we ended up playing it out, uh, and then we we're able to revive. We, we do end up losing her again. He does have Lulacar, which gives him a lot of sustainability. So the fight played out for a very long time, but I saved souls on Stene. Um, to a point where I could get the uh, Angel of Light Angelica off the board. Once I get her off the board, we're almost wrapped back around into the Dustina heal. Uh, we're one turn away. So he goes and kills my Airwell, but my Dustina is pretty tanky. For a new new account, she's she's tanky, so I'm not too worried at this point. Um, and I have Soulburn on Stene, so, and we're in Frenzy. We're going to be pulling up on Frenzy 5. So I know with max stacks, my Spectre Debris is about to do insane damage here. I'm debating on burning it or not, but I figured this is the best chance. I'm going to get countered by Ed if I land a poison, but it's not going to kill me. And if it provokes me, then I'll just attack again and probably end up killing. So as you see, the damage there is pretty good. My Spectre Debris is also on a free-to-play or the free attack set that you get. No crafting. So even with missing the crit, I'm able to two-tap the uh, shoe because of the poison. So... That was the game. 80% win rate? I, I I don't know. I was very happy with it. So I guess, I guess I could say if I didn't have Solitaria, I would have had a lower win rate. Um, and I did get... So all the matches I got unlucky in, I did get lucky in other ones. So the games Aiden didn't dodge, there were games that Aiden did dodge that won me the game. So I, I, would, I would say 80% is pretty fair. Maybe... Maybe it should have been a little lower, but I don't know. I, I love this challenge. It was so much fun. Hopefully, me going over my RTA matches here, some of you that are just getting an RTA, and see the units I used and um, kind of follow what my thinking was throughout that. I tried to try to explain the best that I could for each character. But either way, very fun challenge. Uh, end the video here. If you guys enjoyed, then I will uh, be making guides soon. So if you subscribe, that'd be great. Um, link to join the Discord down below. If you're interested in account work, join the Discord down below. But it's been Mitchell or Deity, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.